Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here, wishing you all a happy International Vulture Awareness Day. Seems like an odd holiday, but it is one worthy of celebrating. Now, I'm actually working on a very long, in-depth video on all the vulture species of the world uh, because vultures are something I'm very passionate about. But today is a holiday where we're supposed to celebrate and promote the awareness of vultures, so I thought I'd make something simple and fun and just bring up a few points. Now, vultures, uh, a lot of times I talk to people about them because I love them. I just, I think they're gorgeous. I think they're amazing. And I always have people be like, oh, I think they're gross. They're so unattractive. And it's like, okay, well, attractiveness is is an opinion, right? That's, that's very subjective. But here's the interesting thing about it. Uh, the same things you might say of why you wouldn't like a vulture visually, uh, you know, oh, they're gross or they're scary or looking or they look mean or they look disgusting are all the things we love about Halloween. It's ironic. You'll be like, look at my costume. Ooh, it's gross. It's scary. It's monstrous. Ooh. So we celebrate those same attributes at Halloween. And that's why vultures are often decorations for Halloween. I love them year round. I think they're fabulous, incredible creatures. Now they do a great service to us all over the world, wherever they live. And that is that they eat carrion. They eat dead stuff that would be out there rotting, harboring uh, all, all kinds of diseases. Now, when there are microorganisms in the gastrointestinal tract of all vertebrates, when an animal dies, those those microorganisms, those microbes start like, oh, there's no food coming into the stomach or intestines anymore. We're going to start eating this animal. And they ferment and off gas. And that's why you see bloated roadkills. It's disgusting. That is just a, the, the perfect conditions for harboring and spreading truly dangerous diseases. Vultures come in and help clean that up. And what's really amazing is the vultures have a digestive system that's developed over time that can handle some of the worst diseases that are thrown at them. Now, I've got to be, I've got to make an honest point here. I've worked with a lot of vultures in rehabilitation and uh, some in education. And it's not that they prefer rotting food. It's not like, I want to eat something that's gross. No, I, I fed my vultures all fresh food and they loved it. But that is a role that they fill is that they clean up for us. And that alone should be a reason why we should appreciate them. But they're also absolutely fascinating. They've inspired religious movements and uh, all kinds of iconic spiritual paths for people in cultures all over the world. And their gracefulness when they fly is absolutely unparalleled. Any type of vulture you see flying when they're just gliding and soaring, it, it will move you to tears if you see it in the right conditions because they are breathtaking in this way. There's a, there's a vulture species, the Egyptian vulture that uses tools that will select a rock and will go and it will break open ostrich eggs to eat the yolk. There's a vulture called a lamagir or lamagire, some people pronounce it a little bit differently, that will take bones when there's nothing left but bones at a kill site and it will take and fly up and drop the bones from hundreds of feet and let them shatter on a rock and it'll go and eat the bone pieces and then consume the marrow in it and its digestive system can break down the calcium and get that marrow out. So they're amazing animals. They truly are. And they can handle so many pressures. They actually do uh, 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 have the ability to handle a lot of human pressures. One of the things they cannot handle at all is lead. And so I do want to share one point and kind of plead out there with, uh, with uh, my gun hunters out there because lead is bad completely for the environment but this isn't an environmental thing. I want to hone in specifically on animals like vultures and eagles. So first of all, people who like to hunt jackrabbits. Most people who shoot jackrabbits with guns just leave them out there. And that's thinking left over from the 1800s where you'd have big plague years where, you know, just bajillions of rabbits would come in and would just decimate farmers' crops. So there's this mind mentality out there like, oh, jackrabbits all just need to be killed. They're a pest. They're killing our crops. And I'm like, you shot this in a valley that doesn't have a single farm. Um, if you shoot a jackrabbit, remember that jackrabbit would have been food for something like a golden eagle or a coyote or a badger. Now you've shot it and it's laying there dead. And it's like, well, coyotes will eat it. The vultures will eat it. Yes, they will. They'll come down and they're like, hey, this is easy. I would have had to have hunt this, but instead it's sitting right there. So eagles and vultures will come in and eat this dead rabbit and they'll ingest the lead pellets and they die a horrible painful death, losing all their, their faculties and just absolutely coming apart. They cannot process it, okay? 
So be responsible with how you hunt. Not only with small game in that way, but with large game. A lot of animals, uh, a lot of hunters, when you're hunting, let's say, a deer or an elk, when you shoot a deer and it's dead, then you, uh, you clean it, you dress it in the field, right? And so you remove the viscera, all the intestines and all that. You're not going to eat that, so you put that aside and you're like, oh, the coyotes and the vultures will eat it. And then you take the rest home of all the meat and stuff to eat. Well, the problem with that, that seems like a good idea. That's not with a shotgun, that's with a single bullet. But here's the problem that happens. Uh, I could not believe it when I saw this demonstrated uh, through experiments done by the uh, Peregrine Fund. And what it is, is when you a bullet enters, then lead sloughs off of the bullet and looks, and not, not looks, but just the, the way the pressure in the body is, it will gravitate towards and be forced towards the area of least pressure, which is the viscera, far less dense than musculature. And so what happens is you have all this dust that's left up and they show these amazing experiences. I could not believe it. There is gobs and gobs and gobs of lead in that gut pile. Okay, and you just leave it out there and, all, and then the eagles and the vultures come in and they're like, oh boy, free food. They eat it. They're all going to go die. It's very simple. It takes a little more work, but not much. And I think it's well, well worth it. If you're a good, responsible hunter, you love getting outdoors, you love knowing where your food comes from, you love having a nature experience, well, let's make sure we keep our vultures and our eagles safe too. Once you clean a big game animal in the field, please bury the gut pile. Please do so. If you're hunting with lead, then please bury that because there, even though it's a tiny bit that sloughs off the bullet, it is more than enough to kill all the vultures and all the eagles that come in and even off of that. So that's a way that we can try to help keep vultures doing their job, their role, uh, keeping our environment clean. So I hope you find that of interest. Be watching on my channel. Again, I'm going to have a very long in-depth video that will go far more into all the vultures of the world every single species we're going to cover but until then uh if you haven't already please hit subscribe let me know what else you'd like to see down in the comments below and as always happy hawking